Hi, I'm Tasha Greer. I'm a homesteader and writer in Northwestern North Carolina. And I'm out here in front of one of my garlic patches today because I want to tell you a little bit of information about growing garlic. I actually have tons of patches like this because I'm a garlic addict. <laughs> and I also really love it because in my climate, I get to plant it in October and I'll just grow it through until about the beginning or middle of June. This year we had a really cold spring and so it's actually June 24th today and um, this is, you know, I'm just now getting started on my harvesting and I'll be working on it, you know, for the rest of the afternoon. Um, but the great thing about garlic is just because it grows before things really get going in the garden and so when I take this out I still have plenty of time to grow squash, corn, um, I'm a little bit far out there for sweet potatoes because we do have early frosts in October um, but I could certainly you know transplant some tomatoes or some peppers um, and I could even do a late crop of cabbage in here so uh, that's kind of the nice thing about garlic is if you're trying to maximize your garden space you can get a good rotation with it. Um, now you can't always plant in uh, in in fall some climates your soil just freezes too deep and you'll have to plant in spring but in those kind of climates you tend to have a longer cold period where garlic can grow without it getting hot and stressed and so you can usually still get a pretty good crop um, but for me I'm actually in a great place where I can grow both hardneck and softneck now hardneck, you almost never see that at the grocery store because hardneck doesn't store very well. But hardneck puts out these beautiful garlic scapes that are actually edible. I'm going to pull one out. Just so you can see a little bit more of the plant. Um, but we call it hardneck because down here at the stem portion, it's hard. You can't uh, braid this the way that you see in those like fancy pictures of the rustic farm kitchens. This is not braidable. Um, it also doesn't store as long, so this is something that I'll eat, you know, I'll still cure it for a couple weeks. Curing just means to dry things out a little bit, um, take off a little bit of the moisture so that uh, each of the individual cloves gets a paper coating and it makes it a lot easier to peel the head and get to the garlic. Though you can certainly eat it fresh too. But this I will um, eat within the next three to four months. And then I'll start going for my soft neck garlic because soft neck garlic stores a lot longer. And my soft neck, these guys I actually probably wished I could have harvested them about a week ago, but we had pouring rain, so I needed to wait for the soil to dry out just a little bit. Um, so what I will do for each of these guys is I'm actually going to do a little test on the stem to make sure that the stem's not about to rip. First, that stem was fine. The garlic came out beautifully. It is completely ready to dry. And the way that I knew was because I get these sort of papery layers down here and those are a good indication that the paper layers around the cloves are starting as well. So there is the difference. Now um, soft necks store long, hard necks eat those sooner, but if you can grow both varieties they have such different flavor complexes that it's just so much fun to grow both. Plus those scapes. Um, this one's a little bit past prime because it's browning at the tip, but when they first emerge, right before they start to uncurl, because they're like, you know, sort of Dr. Seuss curly monsters when they first start, you can clip them down here and you can chop them up in your salads. You can saute them um, and use them as a garlic substitute. You can make garlic scape pesto out of them. Um, personally, I really just like salt, pepper, a little olive oil, vinegar, and then a quick saute in the cast iron pan. And then I eat them like, you know, decadent potato chips. They're so wonderful. Another thing I want to talk about is weeds. Um, you know, no gardener in the world loves weeding, and I probably uh, like it more than most people because I take all of my weeds and give them to my ducks and my chickens. And even if they don't eat that weed, bugs and soil decomposers and things do. And so after a couple days of the weed sitting around in their chicken yard or the duck run, um, bugs will be underneath and they'll start pushing it over and digging the bugs out underneath. So I love weeds, um, but I'm not so uh, so crazy about pulling them all the time. Like I do it, you know, once every few weeks. So here are my garlic patch. There's actually a lot of weeds in here. 
When I first planted it in October, I kept the weed pressure down until the garlic top started coming up and I knew that they had established in the soil. And after that, it got cold, so I didn't have to worry about weeds too much. Um, and then in the spring, the only thing I went through and looked for were weeds that were probably going to have a deep root, like mustard, for example. Mustard can get a root that's three feet deep in good soil. So I didn't want that, mu you know, something like mustard competing with my garlic, so I pulled that out. But dollar weed. Shallow grasses. Things that have roots that don't go down to where my garlic roots are. Um, you know, if they're getting out of control, I'll do a little bit of weeding. But if they're really just the light coating at the surface, after the garlic is growing well in spring, I don't worry about it too much. And so then I, after I pull out this garlic, I'll just clean up my bed. Um, once I take out anything in the bed, I always put something back in. So if I've got some leaf compost, I'll use that. If I've got some really well-aged compost, I'll put a little bit of that on top. So the soil can only keep giving if you keep giving to the soil. So you always wanna think about take something out, put something in.